So let's start with the full 360 degree view of the CSB 170. This is one shiny piano. As you can see, it's definitely got a nod to the traditional, as these Yamaha Clavinova digital pianos do. But look how narrow this is as well. If I show you down the back, it's virtually flat. I want to give you a few of these views and a few close-ups that you won't necessarily get in the brochures or on the website. And this is the CSP 170. Check out the ePiano's website for the latest deals and offers on Yamaha digital pianos and keyboards. Also check out our huge selection of pre-owned stock and come and visit us in our showroom here in Banbury, just off Junction 11. So just coming in for a bit of a close-up on the legs here. You can see it's got this nice pillar at the front as well. As I said, this is the polished ebony finish, and I'll go into a bit more detail about that and how it differs from the other one as well. Uh, the cavity underneath, which I'm going to cover in a bit more depth again later on. Uh, along the front here, very shiny. By the way, you can see dust on this, and I have just dusted it. And as nice as they look, these pianos, you're going to have to get pretty clever with how you dust the things or what products you use. I'm sure there are really good products out there for keeping them dust free, but the cloth I've just used has just seemed to have attracted back all the dust onto the piano, but never mind. So let's have a look at this music rest just here. Now, just note that the music rest on here at the minute also contains our iPad just for demonstration purposes. Piano does not come with an iPad, as you've probably already figured out. Uh, the music rest here is designed to support full-size 2A4 sheets, but you could probably get um, couple of well about four A4 sheets I would say on there uh, it's also got these clips just here look for coming up and holding open the pages of the book so bear in mind this whole section here that's got the iPad in it this is just for security so no one pinches it from our showroom that's what the music rest works like and it's bolted in pretty securely at the back note those cables again just connecting our iPad to the uh, piano incidentally the way that happens is just down here at the side can you see here? This is where the iPad would be connected. Now you can do it via Bluetooth as well on these pianos, but you can use a cable too. There's the regular long iPad connection there. That's into a lightning connection on the side of that iPad. And on the other side, they've put a USB to host as well. The other type of iPad connection that allow you to go out of the piano too. So unlike the CLP models, there's not an option to lay down the music rest flat. It's always going to stay up like that. You could take it off if you wanted to, but the, on the CLPs there was an option to lay the music rest flat. You can't do that on this one, just so you know. Uh, this being the CSB 170, of course the keys, if we have a close up on these, do you notice we've got a nice sort of wood grain on the black keys here? Can you see it if I get really close in? So there's a, a nice sort of traditional wooden feel to the black keys and of course the white keys themselves are wooden as you'll see now that's one of the major differences between this and the csp 150 uh, make sure you check out our comparison video of the two while we're in this area i should show you that one of the big features of this piano of course is the what they call the drop lights which i've just turned on here i'll turn the volume up slightly above the keys you get these, the drop lights, which show you which notes to play next. And there's a whole host of music built into it and you can use via Yamaha Smart Pianist app, which is what I've got loaded in here at the minute. Fantastic app. In fact, we've got a whole video on how this works with the various Yamaha pianos, which uh, you can see by uh, clicking on the screen just there. So that's where the drop lights come through. The red ones indicating white keys and the blue lights indicate uh, using the uh, black keys. Uh, also up in this area we've got of course the uh, the lid or the fall as it's sometimes called opens up like that and just to get right into the details here you can see the rails that it goes up and it sits it clunks in and sits quite nicely in the top there uh, while you're playing there's no way that's going to come out in the middle of playing it also feels it's got a nice weight to it it's a very solid and it's smooth the whole way through. It's got that satisfying clunk as it goes down and keeps uh, the dust off the keys and also keeps the dust from going in between the keys as well. 
keeping it out of all the electronics, which is probably a sensible thing to do. Up in this area as well, we can see the, <clears throat> the top speakers, the tweeters up here are housed in this section with the foam in front of it, and that extends the whole length of the piano across the music rest over to that side as well. Um, the other set of speakers, and again, another thing that, ma that makes the difference between this one and its uh, little brother, the CSP 150, <clears throat> is underneath we have this great big bass speaker, which is missing on the CSP 150, but this is what gives this piano a lot of its oomph. And this is one shiny finish, isn't it? Oh, look, it's me. Um, incidentally, the finish, <clears throat> polished ebony finish, important detail I want to show you about this is look at the edges of it. Do you notice you cannot see a join on the edges here? Um, it's totally smooth. This is 52 layers of polished lacquer, and this is why it costs a little bit more. You've probably noticed in the CLP models that you do pay somewhere in the region of three to four hundred pounds extra having a polished finish rather than the uh, matte finish. There's a matte black, which behind me I've got the little brother, the CSB 150, which has the veneer on it, and you can see the join. Look, if you look closely, now it's still a really nice finish, granted, and, and certainly from a distance it looks great, but the reason it's cheaper is because obviously they've they've saved cost somewhat by using a veneer, but it's still joined fairly well, but it's pretty clear, isn't it? You can see that there's a join on there, but on the 170, the polished ebony finish, you can see it's a lovely smooth, no join finish that extends for the whole piano. So going back underneath here, um, one of the interfaces, I'll just show you a wide shot of the underneath there. So you've got the pedals down there and the whole speaker cavity too. Notice the speaker's pointing downwards and this lower cabinet does have an acoustic property to it as well. The backboard is involved quite a lot in throwing the sound out towards you as your position sat playing it. Um, but what I wanted to show you down here was this interface just here. Um, headphone sockets, two of. So you can play with a duet as well if you want to. You can plug two sets of headphones in at the same time. Also an auxiliary input just behind them. Small jack auxiliary input. Uh, you've got a microphone or line input, meaning you can plug any um, microphone into it and sing through the speakers, which is great for using with that smart pianist app that I mentioned before. Um, and you've got the input volume for controlling the volume of the whatever input it is you're using. You can use a microphone, but you can also probably use something like a guitar as well, or anything that transmits a uh, digital signal. That's really useful too. This is a headphone hanger um, for if you do play with headphones, you take them off, you think, well, where am I going to hang them? And uh, that's the place to do it while you're not using headphones or in, in between playing. So many people using headphones now. This is why digital pianos are becoming so popular. Um, and that's just a really thoughtful touch by Yamaha to put that there. Um, a little bit further on, we've got uh, currently plugged into this at the minute, the Yamaha uh, Wi-Fi adapter just there, but I'm just gonna take that out so we can see what sockets there are here. We've got a USB there. We've also got the traditional five pin MIDI as well as auxiliary out. If you want to go out to extra speakers, you can do that too. There's auxiliary pedal as well, should you want to use something uh, like an extra sustain pedal or a switch or a volume pedal as well. Now that screw just there, uh, this is holding the top section to the bottom section. Now, the important notes about how you actually put this piano together, all it is is the, the main piano part is built already and you simply put the legs together and then attach them using one screw, two screws, and there's a third one just there. So there, there, and there. That's repeated over here on the other side, where we've got serial number on the sticker, should you ever need it, but the screws, one, two, three. Um, don't worry about plugging things in, cables and things like that. It's not complicated at all when it comes to building these. There are two cables. One is the power, and that's obvious, goes into the mains. The other one is the, the only thing that connects the top to the bottom, the pedal unit section. is one socket. There's only one plug it can go into, so you can't get it wrong. Um, while we're down here, the pedals, just here. 
Still got the wrappers on ours. This is a the showroom model. Um, solid metal, really solid metal. Yamaha don't do things by halves at all. And uh, it's built to last. This, of course, is going to get a lot of use, a lot of stamping on. And they're really built to last. Um, you can see even round the edge of the housings, they've put some thought into padding them in there to make sure they last. And underneath, there's this thingy. This screw just here. I'll try and give you a better angle on that. That allows you to um, just adjust into the, your carpet if you've got a really deep carpet or deep shag as they say then you can move that down so when the pressure is applied on these pedals the whole thing doesn't bow so if you do that correctly it'll stand nice and solid and those pedals won't move now just giving you a wider shot to talk about the construction of these pianos 99 percent of people um, buy these pianos and have them delivered flat packed in the boxes that they come in obviously they're very safely packaged there's loads of cardboard uh, polystyrene to keep them safe but when it comes to building them it's also very easy to do um, the top section this whole section is already built with the exception of the music rest which you which you um, screw in that is all made so it's really just a case of building the legs so this is a separate section from this join here downwards including this is all one there's an opposite one down at the other end as well um, you connect the pedals panel and also around the back <clears throat> this black panel here using these screws on the side here one two three four five six at the other end and then you just put this section the whole the, what we call the piano section the top section you lower that down and put it on top of the legs as they stand so construction of these things is really straightforward and easy to do can be done by one person, um, done it myself many times, um, alone just by laying down the piano on its back, connecting the legs, and then putting the top section against the legs and then lifting it up from the back. So it can be done, but obviously it's easier with two people. So that's about all from us. Any questions you have, leave them in the comment section below or just get in touch. Hope that was helpful. That's bye-bye for now.